These are the most savage Stewie Griffin insults. Number one, after finding out that Chris gets bullied at school, Stewie takes pity on his brother and offers to help him. You know the way those kids were picking on you today in school? You really have got to stand up for yourself. Stewie may have gotten a little too personal when it comes to training Chris on insults. What would you say if I said, hey there, shorty? I'd say have another donut, you albino gorilla. Number two, heartbroken when he finds that Brian tries to bury his play script out of jealousy, Stewie unleashes hell on the dog. You have no idea how hard it was to sit in that theater with all those braying hyenas. Couldn't you tell something was up when Chris and the fat man could follow the plot? Stewie didn't stop just after roasting his brother and dad's intelligence. He went and ripped into Brian's play further. May every person that laughs at your sophomoric effort be a reminder of your eternal mediocrity and pierce your heart like a knife. Number three, when the teleportation device fails, Stewie and Brian are forced to fly commercial to Las Vegas. Ugh, this is miserable. Three hour delay and a completely full flight. It's not just family members that get the wrath of Stewie's roasts. He also doesn't hold back from insulting strangers on the flight. Don't look at us, you pig. Take your juicy sweatpants and your dirty pillow from home and your bucket of coke and get the hell out of my sight. Number four, when the Griffins get stuck in space, they each share their fears of what they might not get to do again. I'm gonna miss drinking at the clam. I'll tell you what I won't miss, that waiter who thinks he has to be funny. This leads us to a cutaway scene where Stewie roasts pretty much the entire service industry. Yes, I'd like to chop salad, please, and could I get no onions on that? Hmm, I've got a few connections in the back. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, that's funny. If there's one onion on that salad, you can forget the $1.80 tip you need to live. Number five, while interrogating his toy Kermit, Stewie tries to break the frog by involving Miss Piggy in his plans. Very well, if torture won't work, perhaps a little tenderness will. Mmm, I like your taste in women. As his advances on Miss Piggy continue, it's clear that Stewie's hatred for his mom started early as she gets a brutal behind-the-back insult. Oh God, look at me having sex with a pig. I've become my father. Number six, furious that he didn't get to ask a question at the convention, Stewie kidnaps the Star Trek, the next generation cast. I've transported you all here against your will. I'm a huge fan, and you're going to answer all my questions. Stewie decides to take the cast to the drive-thru, but when Marina Sirtis goes against his idea, he makes sure to knock her down a peg. Stewie, I'm not really much of a fast food eater. Yeah? Can you read my mind? Can you tell what I'm thinking right now? I'm thinking shut up and get a salad. Number seven. When Donna gives Chris a spanking, Lois goes over to the Cleveland's house to confront her on what she did. I don't spank, and my children are very well behaved. Oh, yeah? Your baby's on the roof right now. As Lois tries her best to control Stewie, he makes sure he continues to be a difficult child, as well as insulting her age. You get down from there this instant. Munch me, Right now, Stewie, or you're in timeout. How many gray pubes you plucked today, you old bag? Number eight, Peter's parenting techniques hit an all-time low when he brought sex workers around to Cleveland's house while Stewie was there. All right, come on, ladies, right this way. This'll show them that Cleveland's not fit to be a parent. Surrounded by prostitutes, Stewie asks some questions that are pretty vulgar, but undeniably hilarious. So tell me, is there any tread left on the tires at all? Or at this point, would it be like throwing a hot dog down a hallway? Number nine, it's a dangerous game to play, but Brian Brian leaves Stewie to his own devices in the airport while waiting for their flight. Wait here at the gate, I gotta run a quick errand. When a passenger shows worry about a baby alone in an airport, Stewie lets him know his worries should be more about his own life choices. Aren't you a little young to be traveling alone? Aren't you a little old to be wearing braces? Number 10. After finding out that Chris only won Homecoming King out of pity, Brian and Stewie agree to keep the information from him. Do you think he knows? I can't imagine. And we can't tell him. It would destroy him. But as usual, Stewie can't last long in being kind and has to make a dig at Chris. Now, if you'll excuse me, I shall select three things from Stewie's room that I wish to be mine. There's a book in there on how to eat healthy. Why don't you take that, you fat Number 11. While talking to Meg, Brian talks about his need for a vacation, which Stewie finds laughable. Oh, yes, because you've got such a heavy workload around here. Hmm. How you, uh, how you coming on that novel you working on? Huh? Stewie won't just leave it there. He is relentless in teasing Brian about how long his novel is taking. Talking about that three years ago. Huh? Been working on that the whole time? Nice little uh, narrative, uh, beginning, middle, and end. 
some friends become enemies, some enemies become friends, yeah? Number 12. After finding out that Peter may be less than a genius and somewhat mentally incapacitated, Meg is worried about how it will affect her. I can't believe this is happening to me! I can never go back to school again! But Stewie savagely humbles her and reminds her that this isn't her downfall. Oh yes, Meg, yes, 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 everything was going swimmingly for you until this. Yes, yes, this is the thing that will ruin your reputation. Not your years of grotesque appearance or awkward social graces. 